Here we go. Holiness, holiness is what I long for. Holiness is what I need. Holiness, holiness is what you want from me. Righteousness. Righteousness, righteousness is what I long for. Righteousness is what I need. Righteousness, righteousness is what you want from me. So take my heart. Take my heart and form it. Take my mind, transform it. Take my will, conform it to yours, to yours, O oh Lord. To yours, to yours, O oh Lord. Faithfulness. Faithfulness, faithfulness is what I long for. Faithfulness is what I need. Faithfulness, faithfulness is what you want from me. Brokenness. Brokenness, brokenness is what I long for. Brokenness is what I need. Brokenness Brokenness is what you want from me. So take my heart. So take my heart and form it. Take my mind, transform it. Take my will. Conform it to yours, to yours, O oh Lord, to yours, to yours, O oh Lord. Give them praise this morning, church. Glory to God. Uh, Frank, would you mind opening us up this morning? Amen. Thank you, sir. Proverbs 22, verse 6 is going to be our main text. I'm going to hand out some scriptures here. Um, I have to say that uh, I do feel pretty good about this Sunday school. I hope I can get through it all. Um, these are a lot of work when it comes to uh, kids. Amen. I wish uh, everyone who had kids would come and benefit from this. But, of course, we do have the... Uh, live stream now and I'm sure some people watch it afterwards and so but I'm going to hand out a few scriptures so this is part two remember we did a, a, an intro and then uh, I did part one uh, and then now this is part two of parenting skills this one's on inconsistency and it's called the silent killer right how inconsistency is the silent killer of uh, homes, amen. So I need Proverbs 22, verse 6. Proverbs Richard. Um, I need Ecclesiastes 9.10. Ecclesiastes 9.10. Gracie, thank you. Proverbs 13.24. Uh, Berkeley. Proverbs 13.24. Uh, 
I need uh, Berkeley, if you can also get Proverbs 14, 23. And uh, I need 1 Corinthians 15, 58, uh, Diana, 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 58. And then Jordan, you can get for us James 1, 2 through 8. And Alani, was your hand up? No? Okay. Uh, I need a Song of Solomon. Okay, uh, Eric, uh, Song of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 8 and 9. I need a Genesis 49, Genesis 49, Alex, thank you, Genesis 49, 1 through 4. I need Proverbs 25, 19, uh, Sylvia, Proverbs 25, 19. I need Proverbs, Sylvia, if you can get both of them. Uh, Proverbs 25, 19 and, and Proverbs 25, 28. You know what? We're going to give you three. Can you handle three? Okay. Proverbs 29, 11. So Proverbs 25, 19, Proverbs 25, 28, and then Proverbs 29, 11. And then I need, this is a, 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 a big one. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 6, which is our main text for the whole parenting skills. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 12. Deuteronomy chapter 6. You want to get that, Frank? Yeah? Okay. All right. Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 12. Uh, Deuteronomy 6, 7. I got two more scriptures. Deuteronomy 6, 7. Okay, who's got their hand? Bethel. And uh, no, that was it. Okay, Bethel's got the last one. Okay, inconsistency, the silence killer. Go ahead and read Proverbs 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Amen. Train up. And so the idea is to teach, right? You are training them upwards, right? Uh, you're, you're training them towards life. You're training them uh, towards adulthood. You are preparing them uh, for this time in their life. Their entire time that they are at your, at your house, it's a training session, right? You are teaching them. You are preparing them for something. And how you train them or if you train them has a lot to do with, with how successful they're going to be in life. Uh, Craig Groeschel said, Successful people do consistently what others do occasionally, right? And so this can be applied to parenting, right? What you do consistently is going to play out in your children's life. Uh, I said this a couple of weeks ago. People complicate their lives because they refuse to do the simple things. Okay, parenting is not difficult. It's not impossible. We complicate our kids when we refuse to be consistent and put boundaries in their lives. And notice what I said. We complicate their lives. Okay, consistency is a boundary. It's what keeps them within the safe zone. And we're going to look at how this is a silent killer. Inconsistent behavior is a, is a silent killer in the home. Inconsistency destroys more homes than having children out of wedlock, right? When, when, when a parent or parents are inconsistent, um, you are setting those kids up for failure. Inconsistency from parents confuses children. We're going to learn this. It, it erodes trust. It causes fear in their lives. And it can lead um, to a sort of learned laziness. Okay, listen to me. When you're not consistent with your kids, when you don't put structure, you are raising lazy children. There's a, a huge possibility that that person is going to be, that child is going to be lazy. Nothing will create more uncertainty and confusion for a home than inconsistency. It creates confusion and it creates lazy children. Look at Ecclesiastes 9.10. 
Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might. For there is no work or device or knowledge or wisdom in the grave where you are going. So he says, whatever you do, do it with your might. In other words, when it's in front of you, do it with all you've got. And it's a good picture of parenting. You get one shot, right? You have to do it with all your might. It was recently reported in the Telegraph that schools are being issued with checklists designed to root out the worst behavior offenders, uh, uh, offenders and ensure staff reward well-behaved children. And so they're starting to single these uh, kids out, right, that, are, uh, that misbehave. They, they have emotional uh, problems. They're, they're angry. They're, they're constantly causing problems uh, in the schoolroom. And what they found, right, in this study is what they did is uh, they went to their homes to study their homes and found that they act the exact same way at home Disruptive, right, unruly, misbehave, scream, throw tantrums. They do all this at home. The article says inconsistency is certainly the main cause of behavioral difficulties in children. This is the case with parenting and is no different in schools. Children know exactly what they can get away with and with which adult. They call it the silent killer because you can't see what your inconsistency is creating until your kids become adults or they get older. Right? I want to show you a little video I put together of what happens when, you don't, when you're not consistent, when you don't have boundaries in your home, uh, what we create. And all of us have probably seen uh, one of these kids at Walmart. He's 10 years old. 10 years old. You can pick up that whole thing now. All I was, Josh, all I was asking you to do was pick up those three parts. All I asked you to do was pick up those three parts. And you, so now you can pick up the whole thing. You can pick up the whole thing now. You don't get to watch TV. I want to watch TV. No. I want to watch TV. Gosh, stop. I want to watch TV. I want to watch TV. I want to watch TV. And I don't get to watch TV. Yeah, because oh, you... Yes, I do. Oh, yes, I do. No, you don't. Stop. No. You start bawling your eyes when I put my foot in the door. You start choking me! I didn't even choke you! Yes, you did! No, I didn't! Uh, Josh, let me go over to my neighbor's house! No! Yes! No! Yes! No! Yes! I'm posting this on Facebook. I didn't do anything wrong, just give it to me! No, you can wait till tomorrow. No, where is it? Give it to me, where? No. She where took away uh, her Xbox. It's in the back of your Xbox. dad's car. And he has the key, and you can't get it. Nope. So you might as well just go in the house and find something more productive just to do inside. Just make it easy and give it to me right now. No. Just do it. Get in the house. Find something better to do but with I your time. Yep. That's right. And you find something better to do with your time than to play with an Xbox. Be more productive. What now? What are you doing? I'm freaking done with this crap. Oh, I can't take it anymore. I'm getting back my Xbox. What do you mean? What, what's in, what are you doing? You William? He's got a William? nice pick. I'm going to get what are you her. doing? William! William! You're crazy! Yeah, you didn't need to make it easy. I just wanted my Xbox back. And you didn't do it. Oh my gosh. You can't just go one easy. darn day without it. You're paying for that window. I'm not paying for it. I'm done! I already told you! Oh, just get in the house, big baby.
you know, who, who do you feel sorry for here, the parent or the kid? The kid, right? Because you know the parent created that. And maybe not intentionally, but by not having boundaries, by not being consistent, is what we're going to learn in this Sunday school, right? Is the parent, your children are a reflection of you. I know we don't want to hear it, but they are a reflection of you. And we create that when we're not consistent in our homes. Proverbs 13, 24. He who spares his rod hates his son, but he who loves him disciplines him promptly. Key word there is promptly, right? You discipline promptly. That means every time. That word means consistency, promptly. When do you discipline him? When he misbehaves. How many times a day? Depends on how many times he misbehaves. See, what we don't understand is that structure helps both parents and their kids. Kids feel safe and secure because they know what to expect. Parents feel confident because they know how to respond. And they respond the same way each time. Routines and rules help structure your home and make life more predictable. Clear structure and expectations provide limits and boundaries and help children not only predict how parents will react but also teaches them how to behave. That's what consistency does. Okay, consistency also gives power to your words as a parent. Listen to what I'm saying. Your words carry power when you're consistent. In other words, when your kid knows that you mean business, your words carry power. If you're that person that, uh, uh, you know, you, you say you're going to discipline them, but you don't, or you give them breaks, then they know that your words have no power. This, therefore, weakens your authority. You have to remain consistent and resist giving uh, into your child, um, especially giving them second and third chances for the same problem or the same thing that they keep, uh, same rule they keep breaking. By right? giving... Uh, 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 giving in to them because uh, they're th um, throwing tantrums or because you're afraid that they're going to cause uh, a scene, uh, you've already lost that kid. That kid is in control of your life. That kid is in control of your home. Here's the thing. One of the main reasons that parents are not consistent is because parents today are tired. Okay. Parents today are tired. I'm sorry, but it's not like the old days where, you know, the wife stayed home and, and uh, there was consistency. The dad just worked uh, from 8 to 5. Now dads, moms are working all the time. And so they're stretched. When we are tired, it's tempting to let go of consistency because consistency is hard work. And if you're tired, you're stretched, you're overwhelmed, um, then you kind of tend to let them get away with things. Okay, I said you were going to bed at 8. You weren't going to be watching YouTube anymore. Uh, but you know what? I'm so tired. Uh, uh, you know, the, so they throw a tantrum. No, I want to watch it. I want to watch it. Uh, you know what? I need rest. Go ahead. Watch it. Okay, they understand what they are doing. Proverbs 14, 23. In all labor, there is profit, but idle chatter leads only to poverty. I like the way uh, the message translation says it. Uh, uh, all hard work brings a profit, but mere talk leads only to poverty. Right? You're going to bankrupt your family if all you do is talk and there's no action. 1 Corinthians 15:58.
but each one in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterwards those who are Christ at his coming. Is that the right one? No, that's not the right one. Yeah, you can, you can read it from the top two if. 58. Therefore, beloved brethren, be steadfast, immobile, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I love that. She had a chance to just look up, but she's like, no, I want to know my Bible. And so she read it from her Bible. That's awesome. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. And so this is a key, right, to parenting well, is that you have to be steadfast. You have to be immovable. Not only are we tired and stretched, but we've grown accustomed to delegating our responsibilities to professionals, right? Well, I'm going to take you to pastor. You know what? That's it. You're going to go see a counselor. And so today, uh, parents let themselves off the hook by delegating their responsibilities to professionals. And I know they have their time, they have their place, but listen, it's my responsibility I never, not one time to this day, ever went to my pastor to have to discipline my kids or to get after my kids. It gets done in my house. Right? Second is consistency allows boundaries and expectations to be set, which actually provide children with a sense of safety. See, when unexpected changes occur, their safety and security is impacted. Sometimes it, it can cause ex uh, anxiety in children. In other words, because there's no consistency, there's no structure. Right? These are kids that are emotionally, um, uh, their emotions are always high. These are kids that act out under emotions. There, there's no structure. They, there's no boundaries. And so... They don't know how to handle a situation because every situation gets handled differently. When there's structure, when they know mom and dad are going to take care of it, kids don't have to worry. I, I'm amazed at how much parents confide in kids today. Let me say it a different way. I'm amazed at how much information parents give their kids about what they feel, how they struggle with depression, how they struggle with... It's, a, it's an 11-year-old. They don't need to know your battles. They don't need to know why you hate your husband. Kids don't need to know why you can't stand your wife. One of the most amazing stories that I ever heard was Nora saying she never heard her parents argue. I mean, to me, that was like, it wasn't real. I was like, there's no way. How could you not ever have it? Never. We knew, though, that when they walked outside by themselves, we knew what they were going to go do. We couldn't hear them, but we knew that they were working things out, though. That blew my mind, man. Today, we dump on our kids all of our problems. And then we wonder why they're full of anxiety, why they're antisocial. James 1, 2 through 8. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives it all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all of his ways. So he says, when you're double-minded, there's um, 
instability in your life. But then he says something very powerful. He says, don't expect God to hear your prayers. Right? He says, you, you have to learn patience. You have to understand that God is doing something in your home. Don't waver. Don't give in. Well, what if I'm being, uh, you know, too hard on my kids? I personally have found it's better to be too hard than too soft. You can always tame hardness. It's difficult to raise kids that you've been soft with and try to change that. It's almost impossible, honestly. Unless that kid, you're going to have to wait actually till they're adults and they get saved. And they realize how rebellious and sinful their nature is. Okay, anybody have something here? Before I go any further, Ruben on top. Um, just want to kind of reaffirm what you had said, uh, how you mentioned um, how you never took, your, never took your kids to pastor, right? But one thing I can say and I can attest from, from, from having listened to countless, over the, count, the years, countless things of advice you've given me on my kids is that the important, I think, um, distinction in that is that you're still willing to seek counsel for raising your kids, yeah. right? And I think that's, it's, it's, a, it's a difference to go Very and good. take your children and get counseling rather than say, okay, hey, I'm going through a situation with my kids. What, what would you give me some wisdom? Very good. Could you help me with that? And I know over the years with my kids especially that I've appreciated that because I've been able to see the, the fruits years later that the consistency has bred in, in their young ages. And a lot of that, I can, like I said, I, know I can personally attribute to advice that you gave me when I was young. And I understood that I didn't know what I was doing, you know. Yeah. And so that, that was, I think, a really, a really powerful element. And, and one of the other things I wanted to say also is that sometimes we have a problem with the word discipline. We, we immediately go to the physical side yeah. of discipline. Very good. But I'm seeing this especially now in my kids as they get older. As parents, we, we have to be consistent also in our ability to sit down with our children and verbally discipline them communicate through the problems that they're trying to navigate through in their life yep. and and it requires patience because you have to sit down and I'm, me and my wife have conversations where we plan out our conversations because we're we're understanding we're going to attack something that is vital in their growth and development okay we have to have a consistent message on this and it has to be biblically based and we have to be have confidence in each other that we're going to stand behind each other for this specific thing because they can't see us being inconsistent yeah. they can't see we they have to see a unified front because um, I, I think it's a principle you told me a long time ago, which is that we are representatives of, of God in their life. They get to see Christ through us. Yeah. And so if we're inconsistent and able to communicate or convey messages, then what are we showing about God in their life? And so it gives a better, a better uh, viewpoint, I guess, for what God can be. He can be a consistent, yes, he can be disciplined, but he can also be fair. Yeah. And I think that's as parents kind of what we, what we should do, so. Yeah, that's very, very powerful. Yeah, very good. Anybody else? Uh, Angel on this side. Also, uh, one of the anxieties or one of the ways that you can really mess up your kid is by taking them to the pasture so that you're trying to instill a fear in them. You know, some parents do that. They, yeah. they use the pastor as a leverage. Like, well, I'm going to tell pastor or let's go talk to pastor. And what that does... Uh, they begin to get this negative view of headship. And, uh, and so, you know, I appreciate you saying that, that, you know, this is something that we learned through the preaching, we learned through discipleship, and, and we're able to do these things at home. But uh, I'll just say any parent, you know, if, if you do have to take your, your child to pastor, I mean, make sure that your motives are, are pure and that they're not so that you can, you know, this old kukui mentality yeah. or something like that because yeah. you're really going to jack them up in the long run when they need to build their relationship with their headship. Yeah, very, very good. Yeah, I'm not the kukui. And, uh, <laughs> and so um, it's important because, you know, I remember parents used to do this uh, in the beginning. I don't have anybody do that anymore. But I had to, you know, uh, I never thought that my kids at Pastor Ruby was the kukui, you know. And so uh, it's important because they're going to become teenagers one day. They're not going to want to listen to you anymore. 
You're going to need an outside source, Irma. You're going to need an outside source to help navigate their lives because once they turn into teenagers, dads, those of you that have daughters that are about to turn into teenagers, you better, you better buy an extra seatbelt. It's, 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 it's about to get crazy in your house. It's about to get crazy. I know they're little angels. Oh, they're so, no, they're angels. When they become, when they turn 13, on that day, at that hour, it's like. <laughs> Anyways, Irma. Um, I remember when Pastor Mendez uh, went to Bible studies and uh, Laura had a, always a, on the refrigerator uh, a list of the chores of the guys. And when it was done, they had to check it off and everything. Because at the end, they'd get an allowance. And I remember she said, yes, what time one was coming to collect their allowance. And then he said, she told him, no, you didn't do, you had some blanks there. It's like in the real world. If you don't do your work, you're not going to get paid. So he didn't get paid. And I, when I heard Jordan talking, also speaking a minute ago, when I went uh, a day to their house, I stayed there. And they had everything, I mean, rules right out, uh, laid out. You know, everyone had their job. And it's not her, just his kids. He had foster kids, too. And everything went out smoothly. And uh, he never wanted Geneva to get stressed out. He, if he saw her getting stressed out, he would go deal with the kids. And uh, uh, I like it because you know how Pastor Walker is so happy and all that? And all the guys said, oh, I want to go live in your house. And I remember Jeremiah saying, oh, they wouldn't even last two days there. You know, because <laughs> yeah. there's structure there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. Yeah, you know, in, in my house, um, uh, you couldn't just go to the refrigerator, open it, and get food whenever you want it. You don't get to go in the kitchen and just get a Twinkie ten times a day. And, and, I, and I don't hide them. I didn't hide them. If you touch that, you can be in trouble. There's, there's set times that we eat, right? There's set times that we do things, and you're going to follow those structures. And obviously, you know, my, my youngest still lives at home with me, but she's, she's 23, amen. I don't treat her like a nine-year-old anymore. But uh, as I was raising them, the important years, I taught them structure. I taught them the importance of uh, rules and boundaries. And I don't care how hungry you are. Uh, you just ate two hours ago. We all just ate two hours ago. You're not going to go back in the fridge and get whatever you want. Absolutely not. No. And so what you're teaching them is how to resist their flesh. You're forcing them to do that. When you just, you don't have any rules, any boundaries, they can eat whenever you want. You know, you get around uh, certain people and, uh, uh, hey, how come your kid's not going to eat? No, they're not hungry. Plus, no, well, they've been eating Twinkies all day long. When are they going to be hungry? My kid's different. <laughs> yeah, they are. Consistency, right? Number three, structures and routines also help kids learn how to control their behaviors. Consistency helps them deal with their emotions. Listen, there's, you can't separate today's children that are on meds, on all these different kinds of psychiatric medications. You can't separate that from the lack of consistency in their home. When you have consistency, even if you're a single parent, when you have consistency, when there's boundaries, when there's rules, um, those kids are more mentally strong. Consistency creates stable and strong mental kids, right? They don't get depressed. They uh, don't easily anger. They don't give up in life. You're teaching them, you know what, you started that puzzle, you're going to finish that puzzle. You started putting that model together and now you finish it. And you'll see uh, kids that don't have structure from one project to the other to the other. to Once it gets challenging, they give it up. And you're teaching that kid that. Right? So what happens when they get older? They give up in school. They give up in their relationships. They give up in their marriages. Because they learned that once something gets difficult, just quit. Song of Solomon 8, 8 through 9. 
We have a little sister and she has no breasts. What shall we do for our sister in the day when she is spoken for? If she is a wall, we will build upon her a battlement of silver. And if she is a door, we will enclose her with boards of cedar. So he says, we have a sister that has no breasts. In other words, she's, you know, uh, eight to nine, something like that. She's, she's very young. And these brothers are getting together and they're saying, okay, what shall we do later in life? Well, if she's a wall, meaning she's disciplined, she has boundaries, right, we'll build on her. Right, we're, we're going to make sure that she's blessed. But if she's a door, if she's loose, things come in and out of her life, um, then we're going to remove things from her. And you see this play out in kids' lives as, as they become adults. You can't build on kids that are unstable. When expectations and consequences are known, children actively make the choice to behave accordingly uh, or deal with the consequences that follows, right? In other words, they're going to make up in their mind, is this worth me getting disciplined for or not? They're going to think about that because they know what? They know that you, when you find out, are going to deal with it. So they're now thinking about this. Uh, is this worth getting disciplined over? Or I just better not do it. That's, that's what you create when you're creating consistency and structure. Let's look at, secondly, what we create. Almost every one of these studies is going to have the second point, what we create. So disruptive behaviors in early childhood, including oppositional, aggressive, um, and hyperactive behaviors, are often stable and predictive of negative uh, health outcomes later in life, right? These... Uh, are things that uh, professionals, right, they know by looking at the structure of your home what your kid more than likely or how they're going to turn out. And so one of the first things is they figured out is that inconsistency in the home causes children to struggle in the future. They, they reproduce what they learned at home. And so these individuals put in the work they put forth the effort to succeed, uh, but because they are inconsistent, uh, they don't reach the levels of success and happiness that they deserve. Like I said, can't keep jobs, can't keep ministries, can't keep relationships. They divorce easily, right, because they were taught that in their homes. Look at Genesis 49 verse 1 through 4. And Jacob called his sons and said, Gather together that I may tell you what shall be half you in the last days. Gather together and hear you, sons of Jacob, and listen to Israel your father. Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. Unstable as water, you shall not excel, because you went up to your father's bed then you defiled it. He went up to my couch. Here's Reuben. No restraints. Right? And Jacob says, Reuben, I'm supposed to bestow a blessing upon you because you're my first son, my firstborn. You were meant to be a man of excellence, a man of strength, a man of might. But because you were unstable, because you defiled, instead, he says, you're going to be unstable as water. And this is, what, this is what we see. This is what we see being created in, in our homes. We have kids that wallow in self-pity today. Anxiety. Depression. Kids today that are unstable mentally, they can't handle pressure, they can't handle life. And like I said, professionals, what they're finding out is that there was no stability, there was no structure in their home. No one taught these kids how to resist the temptations of life. No one gave them boundaries and as a result, 
they undefile their lives. Number two is consistency adds up to unreliability. Look at Proverbs 25, 19. Confidence in an unfaithful man in times of trouble is like a toothache and a foot out of joint. Very good. Confidence in an unfaithful man in times of trouble is like a bad tooth, right? This is what you hear from companies today. I can't depend on this generation of kids. These employees that we have right now, not dependable. One day they're going to show up, the next day they can't because they, they had a headache. They, they, they had a bad day. They had a nightmare. I can't show up. When we don't teach our children to be responsible at home, they will not be responsible as adults. Again, they won't be reliable when it comes to school, when it comes to their jobs, when it comes to relationships, when it comes to ministry, right? The kids that the church can build on are stable kids. A lot of times we're working with kids that they don't have any kind of stability at home and they're unreliable. They're the ones that call or don't even call. They don't even text. They don't even care. Well, where are you? They're not responsible. Number three, since they didn't have any boundaries, uh, they will ignore all boundaries when they become adults. You're going to notice a similarity in every kid that I showed in that video. Not one of them respected boundaries. Throw tantrums, they, they hit, they throw things, they call you names. Look at Proverbs 25, 28. Whoever has no rules over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. Whoever has no rule over his spirit Right, you're gonna, things are gonna easily affect your life. They'll cross communication boundaries. They will bully others. They will insult others. They will say hurtful things to others. They have no boundaries with communication. They just speak whatever's in their mind. Why would you say that? Well, I, I didn't say anything. <laughs> no, you just, you just insulted that person. But they don't have any boundaries because many times we don't teach them boundaries at home. They have no filters. They say whatever they want, whatever they're thinking. It's like there's no filter there. They were never taught. Proverbs 29, 11. A fool vents all his feelings, but a wise man holds them back. H holds them back. A wise man makes the decision to hold back what they're going to speak, right? And so I'm going to try to finish this. I'm in point three, okay? Raising stable children begins at home. Any, anybody have some input here that you want to uh, put into this? Uh, Miss Iris and Stacy. This world right now is going that way with this woke generation. Can you imagine? We all are different. We all have different feelings and needs. And now everybody thinks it's their right to vent. I'm not going to do this because I don't like it. Or don't call me this even though. And I can call you whatever I want. And, yeah. you know, it just, uh, it, it's, how can everybody's uh, wants and needs be met? Yeah. So there has to be some kind of foundation and it's just all going, and I'm glad you're bringing this up because our children are the ones that are going to hold things together. Everything else is falling apart. Yeah, yeah, and the, and the thing is, uh, they have a social media platform now, right? They, these are the what the book calls screenagers, right? They comment, they they put people down on on that platform, uh, but the guy says, "I like for you to say that to their face," right? They they won't. They don't have any kind of stamina, any kind of structure, any kind, everything is done behind a screen. Uh, you know, I'm going to tell you how I feel. And then every other unstructured, uh, unstable kid joins in on that. And they think that the world 
feels that way. And it's just all the same kids that were brought up the same way or struggle with the same things. Okay. Stacy. Um, I know how you're, well, how you're saying about boundaries. Uh, well, in, our, in our home, when we don't just, it's not just at home, when we go to grandma's house, it's, uh, mom, you know, can I get something to eat? Yes, go ask grandma if you can get something from yeah. the fridge. My, and I know my mom's like, no, mija, they don't need to ask. No, they do need to ask yes. because it's not their home. Yeah. You know, and, and in the beginning, it was, it, was, it, was a, it was a fight because, no, this is their house too. No, but even at our house, you know, they, need, they can't just go in and, you know, get whatever they want. They need, you know, it's, it's out of respect, yeah. mom, you know, and I, and I know it was very hard for us, but it's something that, you know, they, they need to respect all adults everywhere, right. not just us at our home. It's, you know, at, at school, at grandma's house, especially grandma's because grandma's can, oh, it's okay, I know I love you, do whatever. No, you, <laughs> yes, grandma, no, grandma, I'm sorry, you know. Yeah. When they call, hey, grandma, how are you doing? Can I blah, 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 you know. It's a, a, a source of respect. And then I know also, like, with, when we had Ray and Kai and Liam, <laughs> Ruben's sister and brother were young. They were 12, 13, 14. And, okay, Tia Summer. No, that, don't call me that. I feel so old. But you're their Tia. Yeah. You're not going to like it when they're older, you know, and they're just calling you Summer. I'm not going to like it when you're older and they're just calling you Summer. You're Tia. But I feel so old. No, you're Tia. It's respect. It's, you know. Yeah. So it's just something that it's not just at home. It's something that you have to show them everywhere in yeah. all aspects of family around them yeah. also. And that's the key, what we're talking about, right, is consistency. You're consistent everywhere. Yeah, so very, very good. Okay, uh, Alex? Yeah, very good. Pastor, I work for Child Protective Services, and what I see in a lot of my cases is that the professionals want to medicate children there's no need for a four-year-old, a six-year-old, a seven-year-old to be medicated for what they call impulsivity, right? Uh, impulsivity is just exactly what you just said. They have no filters. They have no boundaries, right? They, they just automatically act, act out what, what they're thinking, right? That's impulsivity. Um, but what they're doing with this medication is they're cutting off that, you know, mm. that, that time yeah. to think, right? So each year... Over 100,000 children come into the care of the department Wow! each year. And a lot of them are, are come, come with that one issue, impulsivity. Yeah. 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 And exactly what I said earlier is where I'm going to let the professionals raise my kids. Yeah. Very powerful. That is, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, third part, raising stable children. And I'm out of time. So I'm going to skip. Uh, this remaining scriptures, I'm going to read a little bit of Deuteronomy 6.4, which is our main text for the entire series. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children uh, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house. Okay, I'm going to stop there. Inconsistency. Listen, if inconsistency is what created the problems in your home, then consistency is what fixes them. Okay? So one thing you need to learn how to be consistent with is investing time. You have to take time with your children. The, the, the text says sit down and teach them. Listen, it's too tempting to let others invest in our children. We have to be willing to put in the time. And just like we make time for everything else in our lives, you have to learn to make time for your kids. Even if it's just making sure that all of y'all sit at the table and eat together. Right? We still practice that in my home. My daughter's 23 years old. We still sit together at the table and eat. It's a way to communicate. It's a, a way for me to find out what's going on with her day. It gives them value. Listen, dads, those of you that have daughters, if you don't put value in them and show them that they're important enough for your time, they're going to look for that value in other people. 
It gives them dignity. It gives them self-worth when, when they see that you're willing, willing to put in the time uh, with them. Take time to talk to them about God. Not, listen, if the only time you communicate with your kids is when you're yelling at them, you have, you have a problem. The only time you communicate with your kids is when you're telling them what to do or what they didn't do or when you're yelling at them, then you have a problem. You have to have that time. You have to be willing to take your kids out on dates. You have to be willing to take them out on, for coffee, take them for a walk if you can't afford those things. Um, you have to be willing to put the time in in their lives. Talk to them about their dreams, what they like. Number two is try to be consistent across the board. Consistency is one of the most essential and productive strategies for effective parenting. Right? Be consistent in everything you do in your home. Consistency is the structure, right? Rules are the structure. Routines are the structure that keep uh, things in place. Number three is independence. Okay, what do I mean by that? Teach your kids to be independent. Give them responsibilities. If your kid is 19 years old and they still don't know how to use a credit card, they still don't know how to wash their own clothes, they don't know how to cook, they don't know how to be independent, you have set that kid up for failure. Not only does helping them be independent help them, but it helps us, right? It builds confidence in them. Confidence removes fear. And independent thinkers uh, need the confidence to explore alternatives that challenge popular opinions. When they learn how to problem solve, right, you're, you're creating thinkers in your home, which eventually one day will grow up to be leaders. They'll stand out at the workplace. They'll stand out even at school. Your teachers are probably telling you, wow, your kid is brilliant. They stand out. But I think the, the, the most important out of all these three, as I close, is invest time. Spend time with them. Man, my, my schedule is crazy busy. Most of the time, you know, I'm working. I'm doing something for the church. I have to set time aside. I owe my daughter a date right now, but... Uh, I take her on dates to this day. You have to make that time just to go and spend time with her. Just hear her out. Even if half of it sounds like craziness. I don't, I'm not, no, 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 you don't want to do that. No, no, you can do it. I need to do Just, I just hear her out. And then I pray for her really hard when I'm done, you know. It's just letting her know that, you know, today, oh, they're my best friend. But, <laughs> but you don't spend any time with them. How are they your best friend? Right? Usually what that means is I don't discipline them. And so I don't have time to deal with them, so I'm just going to be their best friend. You have to be willing to invest. Consistency or being inconsistent is a silent killer. Okay. One more thing and then we'll close. Anybody? Are they helping you? Yeah? They're helping me. Okay. All right. God bless you then. Next week uh, is going to be great. <laughs> okay.